My name's Justin Workman, I'm 39, and I've been bladesmithing for roughly four years. For the last three months, I've been going through chemo with the hopes that I would stave off the need for an amputation of my right arm. I hope this sets an example to anybody that's struggling. No matter how bad it is, you can still power through it. My name is Doug Ziegel. I'm from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm 33 years old. My uncle was a blacksmith, so I got to move some metal with him when I was younger, and I really enjoyed it. You took something rock hard like steel, you heat it up, and it's like Play-Doh. I mean, what's cooler than that? Justin, Doug, congratulations. You guys made it past round one and two, and now it's just between the two of you with the title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. In round three of the competition, we're gonna send you home to make another culinary tool. But this one's quite a bit bigger than anything you've seen. And that tool is... the Maguro Bocho. Also known as the tuna sword, the Maguro Bocho is a specialized cutting tool designed to fillet massive bluefin tuna. This impressive blade is not your average kitchen cutlery. With a total length up to three feet long, these culinary swords were often hand forged by the same swordsmiths that make the iconic Japanese katana. They feature a thick spine and razor sharp edge that cuts effortlessly through any large fish. The Maguro Bocho is still used today by some Japanese chefs and can be seen on full display at some of Tokyo's iconic fish markets. Now, when you guys build your blades, I want you to follow these parameters. Your blade length needs to be between 29 and 31 inches. You need to have a single edge chisel grind, and I also want you to incorporate a ricasso between the handle and the blade. I'm feeling pretty nervous. I'm gonna have to forge the longest blade I've ever made. Gentlemen, we'll see you guys in four days. Good luck. All right. Good luck, man. We're here at my home forge in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. My game plan is I'm going to sand my, give it a little flux. The heat treat is the biggest thing I'm concerned with. My goal is to get a hardened blade. Oh, I got a nice little warp in that bad boy. Oh, I'm so mad. This whole competition did not go exactly as I planned. Got about four hours left of this competition, and I still have a fair amount of work to do. I know for a fact that I'm at parameters. It's the one thing that I've been checking over and over and over again. I'm back in Mount Laurel, New Jersey at my home forge, and I am ready to get started on my Maguro Boko build. So this tuna sword is probably about twice as long as anything I've ever made. I gotta get the forge hot, and I am ready to put my ADCRV2 in there and uh, get hammering. It's pretty malleable steel, so so far things are going pretty quickly. But I wanna keep making progress as fast as possible. Once the quench comes, that's kind of the make or break situation for me today. So I'm just trying to get the heat right, Yeah, we're in good shape. It's time to get everything fit, assembled, and finish this blade. All right, got a nice clean fit. That is the first look at what will soon be a finished blade. Now that I have the final assembly finished, I didn't come up with an elaborate test, but I used to work at a sushi restaurant, and this is a tuna sword. It cut pretty clean. I think it does the job. All right, bladesmiths. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Maguro Bochos will do, I'll take your weapon and make some lethal cuts on these six different fishes. Justin, you're first. You ready for this? Let's make some sushi. Way to go, man. All right, Justin, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, your edge. One and done for all the cuts here. It's a very sharp edge. I like the handle construction here. It's ovoid, so my hand matches nicely and wraps around it. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Doug, you're up next. You ready? I'm at it. Let's do it. All right, Doug, first up, the handle construction. I really like the way you shaped your handle here, it's typical Japanese style. Now, it's a lighter blade, but your edge 
is so sharp, it cut cleanly through the fishes easily. Overall, sir, it will heal. Thanks. All right, gentlemen, I think you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. Now, we're calling this our bow staff attack. Now, Justin, your weapon is already locked in our device here, and I will be attacking it with our waxwood bow staffs. This test is not about what your blades do to that staff, what that staff's going to do to your blade. All right. You ready? Let's do it. OK. All right, Justin, um, you know, this is a brutal test for what is technically a large kitchen knife, but uh, you did very, very well. Right where my finger is, there's the smallest of chips, and it's, when I say smallest of chips, I mean it's really small. Everything else looks right and tight. All in all, you did a great job. You survived. Thank you. You bet. All right, Doug, you're up. You ready? <laughs> as ready as I can be. OK, because this is fun for me. <laughs> These blades are narrow, really thin blades. It is not designed to take any abuse. I'm already thinking that Justin's got this test won. So Doug, right off, this is a remarkably light there is the slightest rough spot. But besides that, I don't see any deformation in your blade. Blade's as straight as it was when we started out. It's a good, solid piece. Well done. Thank you. So all right, gentlemen, two tests down, one test to go. All right, bladesmiths, we're cutting it close. We know that both your weapons can kill, and we know they're strong. Now it's time to find out how sharp they are. This is the sharpness test. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I will cut through these rolled up tatami mats. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your weapon will do to these mats. Justin, you're up first. You ready for this? Rock and roll. All right, let's do that. All right, Justin, let's talk about the cuts here. Clearly, on the other cuts, they cut all the way through. On the last cut, almost, but just a little skin of that mat is hanging on. But it is a sharp edge. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Doug, your turn. So you ready? Let's see what this thing can do. Let's do it. All right, Doug, first cut just went so easy without a drag that it went into the next target. It is a very sharp weapon. It's very easy to wield, and it's light. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. First of all, both of you, thank you very much for your hard work. But as we know, only one of you is going to be leaving here, the Fortune Fire Champion, with a check for $10,000. And today's Fortune Fire Champion is Doug, congratulations, you won. Justin, unfortunately, you're not going to be leaving with the win today, and Doug's going to tell you why. Justin, on any other given competition, I can see your blade being a champion's blade. It is a beautiful blade. But today, your opponent's was just a little sharper, a little lighter, and faster to wield. Justin, again, thank you very much for your hard work. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. Good job. Thank you. I'm glad that this time frame worked out as it did. Chemo takes a toll on your body. But going through that and then do this whole competition just goes to show myself how much I can actually push through. You know, I've always kind of been stubborn, but I didn't realize how stubborn I am, actually. <laughs> well, Doug, you are the Forge and Fire champion. Congratulations, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. What are you going to get with that $10,000? 
Well, oh, I fell in love with the Forge Press. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I definitely want one of those of my own. I am ecstatic. You know, I put a lot of heart and soul into making that blade, and seeing it perform the way that it did was uh, just a really great confirmation about my abilities, and it's just making me want to make more knives.